Welcome to the Breakfast Leadership Show, where we interview global thought leaders on business, leadership, and life. Here's your host, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and chief burnout officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network, Michael Levitt. Welcome back. I've got Carl Hughes online. Carl, how are you? Hey, good to see you, Michael. Likewise, likewise. You've got a pretty interesting background, so I'll just share with the audience a little bit about you, and then we'll dive into the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. For the past uh, about eight years, I've been a software engineer, engineering manager, and CTO at uh, venture-funded startups in Chicago, which has been really fun. Love managing teams and learning to, to write code. And then uh, last year during COVID, uh, when the pandemic hit, I, my job sort of wind down, put me down at halftime, and I decided to do something different. And so I got into, I always had kind of wanted to be a writer. This is sort of like a, that harebrained scheme that a lot of people have, I think. And so I thought I'd do it in a way that was maybe meshed well with my prior career. And essentially what I did is I started a technical marketing agency. So all we do is we write content aimed at software engineers, which was my you know, prior background. Uh, we're all draft.dev. Uh, and so that's what I do today. That's awesome. And I think that was one area. And I worked for software companies, ironically, in, in Chicago for a bit and Detroit as well. And even back then, because it's been a while, there wasn't a lot of content out there for those people. And it's so critically important because looking at where we are now in life and with the pandemic and virtual and all the things that are going on, tossed in blockchain and all these other things, software design is going to be critical. It always has been, but you think we were depending on it before. We're really <laughs> going to depend on it now and in the Absolutely. future. So having content that's written for those people in the industry and people that are exploring going, okay, I want to do something different. It's a great option for that. So I, this pandemic has created things. Yes, it's been a pain. Yes, there's been loss of life and all those other challenges yeah. and definitely would trade anything to not have to go through it. But what it's done is, in, in many cases, like in the situation with you, it birthed something yeah. that was a need. So how have you found it so far? I mean, it's, you know, it's been, you know, it, I'm sure a bit of a shift, but because you know th- the content so well because you live it and breathe it you know how's the experience been so far yeah it's been great um and yeah totally the pandemic is it, i mean it's, it's been awful like you can't say enough about that but at the same time you're right like it's a anybody with an entrepreneurial mindset i think is going to look at those sorts of events and say well what do you do like how, how can i make the best of a bad situation um, yeah, it's been great. Uh, so it's gone from just me writing a few articles for five or six clients back at the end of last year in 2020, uh, to now we have over 130 freelance writers. We have a full-time staff of eight editors and tech reviewers and engineers and account managers. And, um, and then myself, I mostly now I'm just like a, a manager. <laughs> and so, uh, that's been a new thing. I mean, not being a manager, I'd been a manager before the, the challenge now is being a manager of not just a few engineers, but of like a, a pretty large organization at this point for as, you know, as young as we are. Um, and with people all over the world, we, we started all remote. So we've stayed all remote and we have employees full-time and part-time in 37 countries now. And so, Trying to figure out how to learn to build a culture, and it, you know, when you're across time zones, it's, it's incredibly challenging. I haven't figured it all out, but it's just been it's been fun. I mean, I I love learning, and so to me, this has been an amazing learning experience while also getting to help all these people out there who want to become better writers or engineers, um, and our clients who want good engineering focused content. That's amazing, and. Yeah, you, you'll never figure out the time zone thing. Having worked for companies that had locations all across the globe, yeah, you, you just don't. Even if you go to, okay, we're all going to standardize and just use UTC for our time. Well, yeah. that's great in a work setting, but then at home, you're like, well, what time is it? Oh, it's uh, it's 4 a.m. UTC. And, you know, everybody's looking at you like, what? Yeah. And so, you it's know, like we all have spouses and family to, you know, coordinate our times around, right? And so, right. you know, the way we've tried to handle it has been to be as asynchronous as possible. So as much as possible, move things to to, to email and to, to communi- uh, comments and, and Trello cards and, and Airtable and things like that. That helps a lot because it allows people to sort of 
have these, you know, this big, their to-do list is essentially these comment trails that they can follow along with. Um, and if you, you're, you know, you're working a time zone where you've only got a few hours of overlap, you can ideally go back through them and read yesterday's logs, essentially. Um, but it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that definitely are harder this way. So what was the mind shift like for you to switch from doing to directing? And that's yeah. a common challenge that I see with a lot of people that either leave their work and go to be an entrepreneur or get promoted. And now they're a man, you know, senior manager or a director level. And it's, it's a different mindset. So how, how was that process for you? Absolutely. Uh, the first time I went through this, when I went from individual contributor, just software engineer to really having a team managing five or six people, it was very, it was scary. And it was, it was a total, like, I didn't know what to do with myself. You know, my day became all meetings instead of all code. And um, that was really, it was tough. So I'd already gone through that shift even before starting draft.dev, which was good. But starting draft.dev was kind of a whole new level where now I don't have a boss to kick questions up to. I think one of the biggest mindset shifts that uh, any new entrepreneur goes through, myself included, was I'm pretty independent. I know how to answer most questions, but it was always nice to have somebody just above me that I could say, now, what do you think in this case? You know, And that goes away once you're the, the top, like one and only the founder of a company. And that can be really isolating. It can be really tough because, of course, you can build a team over time, but on day one, you don't have all that. Um, and then you, what I've done is start to build up a, a, a pool or cohort of, of mentors and peers both that I can trade these things around with. Um, so a lot of different ways. I joined a mastermind group uh, with some peers. I am in the uh, Entrepreneurs' Organization Accelerator program. That's been amazing for just getting like a, a coach and, and sort of mentorship. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have to go seek that stuff out and you have to make time for it. And that has been hard. That's hard as well because it, there's so many things that need to get done. It can be hard to step back and say, well, how do I, you know, who do I talk about so, I'm glad to hear that you you know, sought out mentors and coaches and uh, a good colleague of mine as I was building my business. You know, he recommended, say, okay, go find somebody that is maybe 18 months to two years ahead of you in the journey. Yes, you could go to somebody that's really successful. You, you, it, let's say well, you pick on Grant Cardone, for example, okay, or Tony Robbins. Uh, you know, they're you know, different stratospheres, you know, they're, yeah. you know, in the billionaire range and we're not quite there yet type of deal. But if you find somebody that's, you know, a couple of years ahead of you, they're still going to remember some of the things that they've done over the last couple of years. And they can say, yeah, man, man, maybe do this. No, you know what? I thought that was important too, but I found that it was too early to do that. So why don't you shift it over to here? And when I finally did that, it, then I started noticing, okay, I'm, I'm getting some traction here. Now, in your situation with your business, I mean, that's some pretty significant growth. Uh, and, and obviously, you hit what we like to call that unicorn that right. is like, okay, this was something that was desperately needed. Yeah. And no one was doing it. Or if they were, they were doing it so far under the radar that nobody knew about it. <laughs> So you obviously yeah. you hit it and you know to have that type of growth in a team um, where you've gone from doing to meetings and you know a pro tip yeah you know, just you know make sure those meetings are actually have action items and yeah. follow ups <laughs> and all that stuff because otherwise all you're going to have is an office full of those blue participation ribbons saying you know, I just finished a meeting that should have been an email or a tre <laughs> or a Trello message and again you're utilizing technology to minimize some of those things but you know again in the early days everyone's trying to figure themselves out and go okay who what where why how yeah. and sometimes you have to do those meetings to kind of get through the who are we kind of thing. And then, then it makes it a little bit easier. So those meetings are actually um, moving things forward in, in a quicker way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've, we've gone through a few iterations of how we do those sorts of communications and we're now really focused on like documenting all our key processes and making sure that we can scale the team. Because as you mentioned, growing this quickly, we, we didn't really have time to write out a lot of things we were doing. And initially, the, the way that 
a service business like this grows is we kind of like start off with one person in each core function. And then, you know, you get big enough, you add a second in each core function and a third or whatever. Um, but we hadn't had time to start like documenting things when we had just one person in each function. So right now we're throwing more in it and there's not documentation. Training is more painful. So we're starting to, we're, we're sort of paying down that debt now, but it's absolutely, I agree. Like you want to make those meetings really effective because everyone's time is so limited um, when you're small and growing quickly. Of course. So, and all the content that's being created and all the things, what's, what's been some of the positive feedback that you've received, maybe from you know, your internal staff, but also from your clients that are consuming yeah. this content? I mean, the client, so for clients, they are mostly startup companies that want to reach software developers and tell them about their cool new products they're building. And so that's kind of fun in itself because you have a lot of companies that are, are just getting off the ground that we're helping kind of like push over the, the ledge, you know, so to speak. So that's really fun. Um, and it's fun to hear those successes. But even more fun to me personally is hearing the successes from our writers. So all of our writers are full-time engineers at a day job who do this on the side nights and weekends. And so it's really cool. It's like they're trying to advance their, themselves and their career. They're trying to learn to be writers while also staying very technical, being engineers. Uh, so we give them feedback from editors. We have technical reviewers. They're looking at their stuff. We have, you know, so they're getting a ton of like back and forth and advancing like their their skills as writers and engineers. And so for them, it's um, it's a way to practice their communication. We get awesome feedback from them all the time about how, uh, you know, like a couple of things that stand out. We had one who's a college student who's really good, you know, technical writer, even though he's maybe you know a little more on the junior side for our writers. And he's like uh, in India. So he, he sent us a, a tweet after writing an article. It's like, draft.dev just paid my college tuition for the, the quarter. And I was like, oh, man, that is a good feeling. Like to be able to, to help somebody over there, like just anywhere who's like get through a big milestone in their lives. I mean, that, that's there's no substitute for that in my mind. It's a wonderful gift to be able to do that, you know, to impact yeah. people in you know, what you may think, OK, I'm sending this person you know, however much, or they're getting this much revenue from content that they've created, but that content then allows them to do, like you said, pay for a term, you know, that when you have that type of, I guess, approach and experience and, and, and pull, whatever you want to call it to help people reach their dreams and goals. That's when, you know, wow. I'm actually getting fulfillment out of that. Now, you, you, obviously, you're getting personal fulfillment out of it because of the things that's benefiting you, both from a sure. financial standpoint and an impact standpoint, and you know, and just you know, the ability to solve a need and and work with work with people you like working with, and you know, totally. the industry yeah. you like working with. It's you know, it's one of those things where I tell people, it's like you know, design your ideal job what's your ideal job you're if you're an entrepreneur your ideal company map it all out okay there it is okay now you have the map now go do it and yeah. and some people go uh, uh it's like you you can do it you mapped it out if if you can think it it can do it, it can be done yes yeah. there's steps and all of that but you just figure out okay where you know break it down into you know little components if you need to um, but if it's something that's going to solve a need that's out there then here you go. And then, of course, you're doing that. And then you're also impacting people's lives by giving them the opportunity to pay for their uh, education, and, which yeah. will better them to do the things that they want to do in life. And it's just a positive ripple effect all around. And just, just because you saw the need of, okay, there needs to be content for, for software people. And it's kind of a, a matching thing as well, because your yeah. clients are saying, yeah, we need people like this. So here's what we do. And then what happens, and I love that format because that way when a software designer or developer is looking for, I want to write code and I want to do this, but I don't want to do it for insurance or automotive. I want something a little different. And they look and they go, Ooh, that sounds cool. And yeah. they get into it. And it's, that's an awesome, awesome thing you've developed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the couple of things you said that really resonate with my, my experience. Um, one though is, is that whole looking at a market and saying like, what do clients really need? So even as I started off draft.dev, I know it sounds like, you know, we've grown really quickly. Like we knew everything we were doing right off the bat. Uh, but to be honest, like I kind of like, you know, I did a ton of calls with potential customers as I was getting started with this. And a lot of them were 
we're not productive from like a financial standpoint. You just have to like go hear from people what are the challenges in the market. And we designed our service around those challenges rather than trying to, I think a lot of entrepreneurs kind of approach this backwards naively the first time where they they think, oh, well, maybe if I just design a perfect service or product, people will come to it. They'll all, you know, they'll all see that and think it's so cool. Um, you really got to get out of a, you know, out of your office, so to speak, and to hear like what people really need and what they pay for already, what they're looking for solutions for, uh, and build around that. And so that's what we did. And it, it doing that in a very focused way for a very tiny subset of customers, you know, uh, we could have done, I could have tried to start a general content writing agency and competed with all the big content agencies that are doing that. Um, but I just felt that starting with a, a very narrow niche that I knew really well was the, the path forward. Um, just from having seen this for eight years of startup work. Uh, and so anyway, th those are the two big takeaways I had like looking for market demand and really talking to customers and understanding those needs and then just picking one narrow space to start with. And, you know, someday maybe we'll branch out, but uh, for now, so far, so good. That's actually kind of leading into my uh, follow up. Um, and probably the final question is, where do you see the organization over the next couple of years? I'm not going to say that five-year plan. That is just an absolute <laughs> joke because I don't think five years ago, anybody had what we're going through at right now on their, on their to-do list, except Wimbledon. Yeah. Uh, I, don't know if you're, I don't know if you're familiar. No, with I don't. That. Okay. The Wimbledon you know, tennis tournament and all that yeah. kind of stuff. They were one of the few organizations on the planet for some reason that took out a pandemic insurance policy their boards their and all for decades were like screaming at their executives saying why are we paying for this <laughs> it it paid them because they were able to claim on it they were able to get 30 million dollars so they didn't have to you know struggle and all that stuff so that's one of those okay they were really forward thinking and you know the, shows you how much Wimbledon can make when they can afford a policy like that. But at the end of the day, those five-year plans, I, our lives yeah. are, I, I don't even want to say 18 months anymore. It could be, you know, yeah. six month endeavors just based on how quickly things are changing. But you know, I'm just curious to see, you know, where you see things going over the next you know year or two. Yeah. You know, I, I'm glad you asked this question, Michael, because this has been really like uh, high on my mind as we've as I've gone from being in the execution mode, doing all the work and editing and writing to now sitting back and trying to like look at the business more holistically and figure out and give everyone the resources they need. Uh, this question becomes more and more important. And I think in the early days, it, it was everything was tactical. Just how do we set the processes to make this thing work? And now it's like, OK, where's this thing going that we just built? Um, because it is a little machine that does work pretty well and it's scaling pretty well. So now it's like, where are we headed? You know, and the team starts to ask that question more. Uh, one of the things that's been really valuable to me has been digging deep into my own personal motivations and talking to the team more about their values and, and you know what's important to them. And so we started to centralize around a few things. I mean, one is we really want to, I mean, we think we can get five times bigger than we are today just in this specific niche because... You know, in a year, we've captured a, a, you know, a good portion of this little market, and we're going to just keep going in there until we sort of hit that, you know, start to plateau in it. We're also starting to become more valuable to our existing clients. So adding in more services that are kind of like productized, like, the, like our current one, but also um, can, can expand our, our influence, our ability to help them. Uh, and then... The other thing is like building a really good lifestyle business for the employees. I mean, we're bootstrapped, so self-funded. So I don't have a big, I don't have pressure from external investors to, to make this thing a, a moonshot. So in a way that I can stay a little more humble with our, our aspirations, we can be like, well, this could be a great business that pays us all good wages, takes care of us and our families. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, I like, like you had said earlier, like, it's a job I love to do. So that's a perfectly fine aspiration for it. Uh, but I don't, you know, I think that things change over time. And I, I'm very, to your point about like, don't make a five, 10 year plan when you're a year into a business. I, I would agree with that generally. I think it's like good to leave yourself some flexibility. Um, but absolutely, it, we've also started getting better about setting real concrete goals for the next upcoming year and two so that um, everybody has something to pull for together. That's awesome. And I anticipate that there'll be lots of uh, exciting times ahead, especially since, you know, the first uh, few months and, you know, the year or so that you've been into it, it's, you know, definitely been 
uh, a roller coaster of a lot of fun and adventure, and I anticipate that will continue. So, Carl, I really appreciate this conversation. Where can people find out more about you and this awesome work? Yeah, uh, draft.dev is our, our URL. Um, and you can also email me at carl, K A R L, at draft.dev. Or if you want, I'm pretty active on Twitter, and that's at Carl L Hughes. I'm sure I can send you the links and we'll throw those in the bottom. But um, yeah, I would love to. I'm always happy to chat to other entrepreneurs that are, you know, getting, trying to get things off the ground or people in marketing that want to hear about technical content marketing, which is what we do. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, I'll definitely have that in the show notes. So Carl, thanks again and congratulations yeah. and continued success on all of this. Thanks so much, Michael. Thanks for listening to The Breakfast Leadership Show, part of The Breakfast Leadership Network. Visit breakfastleadership.com for tips on empowering your business and your life.